What the fuck was that, Joe? Uh, hello? Hello, Jamie. What was what? The boats weren't good? You set it all up, didn't you, Joe? It wasn't, it wasn't funny. It wasn't Well, funny. I didn't. Jan set everything up, but those boats are fine. What's the deal? No, I'm not talking about the boat. What was, what were the lights and what was the creep in the alien suit? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Why would about? they bring us the cameras we left on the boat unless you told them to? Well, wait, who are, who are they? <laughs> Seriously, is this a joke? <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Jamie are you guys okay <laughs> No we aren't f***ing okay I'm standing in front of what might be America's largest pyramid, a modern marvel based on the great pyramids of ancient Egypt. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that this structure is of alien origin. The top points directly into the sky, calling, beckoning to another spirit. The human hybrid creatures that protect it, clearly from another world. Stay tuned as we discover the brilliance of alien engineers. Great cut. How'd that look? I'm on my way to speak with an expert on Area 51. As a former CIA specialist, he worked on this secret government base during the height of the Cold War. He will surely give us some incredible insight into extraterrestrial engineering. Turn right on the South Road. Got it. I'm going to get your marijuana cards here. Thank you. 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 Oh, this is incredible. Well, thank you, sir. This is an incredible home. Yeah. Is this Lila? An interview with T.D. Barnes. T.D., thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. While you were in Area 51, did you experience anything out of the ordinary? We were what was out of the ordinary there. Hmm. We built a plane back then with slide rules. It's still the fastest and highest flying plane ever, ever built. It was a UFO? It was. Uh, Interesting. We called no one knew we had it. And it flew 90,000 feet. It flew faster than a bullet. And no one knew that had any idea of it, that anyone had a plane that fast and that you could fly that high. And we flew 2,850 sorties out of every 51. But they see the plane occasionally, the light be on it just right. Yeah. And it was a UFO. Ah. Uh, made by aliens. No, we built it. We made it. <laughs> we're, we're gonna take the credit for it. All right, TD. Now I'd like to present some of my Area 51 theories to you. Okay. It is my belief that 
Area 51 is a government project that exists only to study alien technology and reverse engineer it. On top of that, it's an alien morgue. And they study alien bodies, they take their DNA, and they mix it with rats to see what happens. Then, they kill them. The rats. The rats. Reactions. We, I've heard a lot of stories, people. Similar we, to we, that. Similar to your theory. Sure. You know, it is a place to test flight. That's what, there's nothing underground. It's all oriented towards flight technology. Flying alien technology. Well, I won't say alien because I've never seen an alien that's flying. There, but, <laughs> but, no, but, it could, but it could it could happen in Area but, but, 51. But you still would not be able to keep it secret. It'd still be a bad place to do it because you got, for example, when I was at a diner flight. earlier today and the server mentioned that she saw something funny in the sky, so people are talking, mm -hmm. and they do see something. That's it. Alien. It, they do something, but it's not alien. Hmm. It's our. We have found some stuff out there that looks so out of out of this world. You could have otherworldly shapes. You could, all have of other, sudden. you could even have a saucer. These shapes that man could not even dream up. Well, we've dreamed them up. We have. To, we've actually tried saucer technology. It didn't. It's very unstable. It needs but, an but alien the, touch to fly. <laughs> it would. Yeah. <laughs> I just got the inside scoop on Area 51, but my research cannot stop here. I am this close to uncovering a huge alien conspiracy happening right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, Bjorn, tell the cameras to fuck themselves because I don't want to look at them right now. I'm too hot. Brian, can you get a close up on his tan line? Yeah, there's no tan line. What did you think of uh, TD? Was it usable? It was cool, but he didn't think it was real. Aliens? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think it might be unusable. I'd like to know. I don't know. Oh man, the sun. Hey, before everyone goes out tonight, remember we need to get some of those street interviews. The water cycle of the Earth is a constant dance, a pull and push, an exchange of energy. It is this exchange of state uh, I don't get this show. Water evaporates, it pulls energy he just keeps around. talking and talking. It's boring. They don't have a mystery in it. This dance happens over and over again. I'm not the water. He's saying water. 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 Oh, the world's made out of water. Hot water. Water. Cold water. You guys want to go to the water park? Jamie, why are you watching this? He has seven doctorates. Jamie likes it. Look at him. He likes him. Do you love him? He's the next Carl Sagan. Do you love him, Jamie? Who's Carl Sagan? Dr. Warder. Seven doctors and Warder. I have a Dr. Warder. Oh, water skiing. Since the dawn of civilization, humans have been dealing with these changes as they naturally occurred. The ancient peoples of Mesopotamia, Indus Valley, and Egypt developed systems of agriculture and engineering that supplied their regions with fresh water and fertile soil. I'm actually standing in ancient Egypt right now. This is what this region looks like today. Cycles of drought have left this area of the world an arid desert. Without fresh water reserves, modern Egyptians would not be able to survive in such a harsh climate. In the past few decades, all around the world, the temperature has been going up. The past few years have been some of the hottest in recorded history. 
Ocean levels are rising too, what are you drinking? overtaking islands and threatening the I don't know. Fresh water is an increasingly scarce resource, and we're beginning to see the consequences of wasting the one thing most essential to our survival. Bjorn. Hi, Riza. Riza, nice to meet you. Riza, now, as a lifelong resident of Las Vegas, surely you've heard of some of the Area 51. Yes, yes. Have you yourself visited the site? No, I have not. Uh, I heard it's very, people are very strict down there. They can't even let you go anywhere near. Do you so. fear that the life forms that are habitating in Area 51 might spill over to the city? You know what? Whatever they're doing down there, I'm. I, God knows what it Reza, is. Reza, simple yes or no. Was Las Vegas built on alien gold? I wouldn't say that. Look at the, the spoils of riches in this city. Would you not argue that it's far too much for man? It's beautiful. I don't know how they Other did it. Otherworldly beautiful? I. Uh, yes. I think we've come a little bit closer to finding the truth. We're not, are we doing? Oh, oh. All right. All right. And action. Bjorn. Scott, nice to meet Scott, you. Scott, nice to meet you. Do you have any explanation as to why there's so much strangeness in this area? Um, I think it, I think people, you know, in this day and age, they need something out the norm to get out their humdrum lifestyles. You know. Now I don't so, want to put words in your more. mouth, but. Do you think the helicopters that are constantly circling the city are trying to communicate with another life form? You know, that's... I don't know. That's interesting. Um, they, they could be. They could be looking for life forms. I personally believe in aliens. I think it's ignorant to not think there could be other, you know, intelligent life form out there. So, I mean, if there was anything out here, I would not be surprised, to be honest with you, you know? I agree. There you have it. One step closer. We'll be back on Alien Engineers. I'm putting on the spy glasses. It's gonna be like uh, that show. What was that show? Not Home Improvement. Uh, I'm going deep undercover. <laughs> Gross. Could this be? An alien? She sure looks like one. Half computer, half beautiful otherworldly woman. We're getting closer. Where's Jordan and Brittany? These things are really good. Could this be evidence of an alien? This man here? It sure looks like evidence <laughs> of an alien. Dang, are you seeing this? Oh, holy shit. Oh my god, she just shape shifted. She shape shifted. Oh, she's another alien lady now.
gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Wait. We gotta go. Let's go. from the truth. Give me your camera. Right now. Right now. I'm so sorry. I I have no idea what they were doing in there, but whatever it is, I'm sorry, and it's my responsibility, and I apologize. Um, I'm a line producer on a Mystery Channel show. It's called Alien Engineers. I'm, I'm sorry, you said Alien Engineers? Yeah. Uh, very sorry to interrupt your shoot. We will not be bothering you again. Best of luck. Uh. Hey everyone, it's Brittany Big Time and Bjorn. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, we're filming today, and Bjorn has something to say to you guys. No, I don't. He does. Going to bed. God. Uh, well, uh, it's been a pretty crazy day. Um, Bjorn got a tan, and I saw a couple famous athletes, some really cool ones, so that was cool. Um, Who did you see? I saw one of those guys at the Pepper Mill. Who? Peyton Manning. You saw Peyton Manning today? <laughs> uh-huh. Um, okay, well, this is just going to be a quick one tonight because we're pretty tired from shooting, but... Um, what we have sports a, does he play? Football. Idiot. Um, okay. Ready? Many athletes. Ready? One, two, three. Vegas. Vegas. Mm. Kiss from above. Vegas. Mm. Vegas. A white velvet glove. <laughs> Could you please just say something? No. I'm running out of material. No one's gonna watch this. Okay, um uh okay, well check out check out my vlog. We'll be posting some more photos of the trip and Bjorn is gonna tell you something right before we go to bed. <laughs> You're awake? No. I'm sleeping. Trying a fetus on Brian's stupid face. Take one. I'm here in the car to go to a giant fucking dam. <laughs> <laughs> giant fucking dam. Brian's a giant, giant fucking, fucking dam. Dam, dam is. He's I a, know what a dam is. He's a What's giant a dam? fucking dam. Too. It was once a river and now it is a lake. Brian thinks that we're going to see a giant dental dam and he can't wait because he's never. <laughs> I've never seen a dental dam before. <laughs> I honestly haven't either. But um, That's it's a. Prophylactic sheet of latex or something that's not latex. Oh, it's a prophylactic sheet, you guys. I don't know what that is. Yeah, what the hell is that? Let me tell you how I use it on bread. I put <laughs> a piece of rubber on each tooth and I go nuts. Giant fucking dam. Giant fucking, fucking dam. dam. I'm on my way to the Hoover Dam, one of the most incredible structures in the Western world. I've got to ask a question. Is this structure a product of alien engineers? Is it? Look at how much water that is that isn't there. Whoa. Wow. It's 
so big. I don't know. I guess I thought it was going to be a lot smaller. Can you imagine working on this? Brian, is this where your mom was born? I'm standing in front of the winged guardians of the Republic atop the great Hoover Dam. I'm gonna talk with two experts nearby to get to the bottom of this and uncover the truth. The timing for creating the celestial chart, according to the artist, was that he believed that someday, somehow, future civilizations would find their way here. Do you think that it's possible thousands of men and women made this alone? Or could they have had help from something above? Like, I mean, all the clues are here. The winged sculptures, the celestial writings. Like aliens? Like aliens. Alien beings. It's conclusive then. Aliens have had some effect on this dam being built. Erica agrees. Okay. That's right. To assist these future visitors, the sculpture also created a celestial watch, a wheel of time. The yellow arc on the floor is actually a complete circle, showing 26,000 Earth years, or one great year, or a platonic year in astronomy terms. Hoover Dam, interview two, camera one, and take one. It's a giant concrete thing, man-made, trying to control nature. Trying to control nature. Yes. Who would try to control nature? Man. Could man have had help Such from another nice. world? Think about the winged statues in the front. A signal to the sky gods. They look like angels. They look like angels, godlike aliens. <laughs> Alicia on Alien Engineers. Thank you, Alicia. Oh, you're welcome. Glad I could help. Do you want to check out the gift shop? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Great. Visiting the Hoover Dam was a strange and incredible experience. I am more and more convinced that we are near an epicenter of alien activity. In fact, my information tells me that strange phenomena is happening just north of Hoover Dam in Lake Mead. Uh, I think that's a wrap on Vegas, and I think it's time to have fun. Brian, will you accompany me? You ever seen Cocktail? Ever seen it? Who am I right now? Tom Cruise. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, Tom Cruise. Give him a little, put a little milk in there. <laughs> here, just a little. Here. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. One for you. What is this? Uh, alien cum. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I didn't name that. Wait, wait. <laughs> just a touch of milk. This is disgusting. <laughs> it is really. Uh, it's an acquired taste. Mmm, cheers. cheers. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. Mm. <laughs> It's actually pretty good. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah? Yeah. Ready for number two? Let's go for your mind. What about Ryan? Ryan? Let's try this Ryan. one. Ryan! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ryan! Did you just call her mom?
their fountain dried up. After Lake Mead. Yeah. Bjorn! Bjorn, it's the one with the twins! It's the episode with the twins. Largest city. We're here investigating the marshland. Millions of years ago, Chicago was one big wetland. But tons and tons of concrete now occupy what was once watery mud. Were the ancient astronauts involved? Quite possibly. Did the ancient astronauts plant tracking devices? Likely. Did we're you get here. rug burn in that episode? We did. To some yeah. of Chicago's oh, most yeah, so good. people. It is well documented that when the grays are present around you, you will feel a surge of electricity and you'll have goosebumps. And it's very well documented that their presence will do that in humans. All right. Okay, you'll learn. Yeah. Be ready at 10.30. Be ready at 10.30. 10.30. A little bit. Hey, Bjorn, Bjorn, you take a pup? When we had dental work done, um, we were getting messages from aliens. Based on some of the, the research that my sister has done, um, that the, the, the implants, um, in our case, dental implants, are a very common way for aliens to track people. It, it got, got to the point now, we started after that experience, I was actually afraid to talk to, to Tracy about it. And I know, I'm sorry, here, hold this for a minute. Thank you. I think I can get through it. We get very bad feedback. It's, it's quite common to get feedback. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Jamie. Have fun with Sagan. <laughs> I know that it's hit me since I've been here. Do you have a sense that someone's tracking you? No. You don't. You don't get that? No. Interesting. I'm getting tracked because I'm looking at my phone that I'm using for GPS. Quite possibly, that phone was planted there by ancient astronauts. Could it be that the ancient astronauts have found a way to block the signals of tracking so that they still track you, but you feel nothing? Kendall, yeah. do you feel like you're being tracked? No. Do you feel like someone is watching you? No. Let me rephrase. Okay. Do you feel as though someone is tracking you? No dice. No dice. Yeah. Who is your uh, big musical influence? SRV? Who? Stevie Ray Vaughan. I don't know this. He's very nimble on the fingerboard. Is he like Santana? I think so, yeah, except he plays in more uh, like keys or something. I bought a cool swimsuit from China. I got a Chinese swimsuit too, but it feels European. I feel like if we spent maybe an hour longer with PD, he would have willed us something. I thought I had a nice rapport with him. I thought you guys got along. I thought we did too. It was great. I felt the connection. <laughs> uh, I dropped a mic once for a fact and it broke it. I both love and hate imagining you doing that for your parents, like a dinner. I said it's like a Sunday dinner. dinner. Mommy and daddy, I have a little something. I'm a rapper now. I worked on this after Girl Scouts. I just wanted to be a cool lady rapper. People are encouraged to yell it at the top of their lungs. I feel it's pretty inclusive. Oh, that was I'm gonna say the tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Oh, oh, my bad. Oh. 
Well, now we're seeing some shit. Our ailments. Nice. Thank you so much. That's sick. We're doing it. Whoa. This is Lake Mead. Our crew is about to board the boat and explore this mysterious place. Do you smell that? I think I just heard it. I have received over a dozen reports of people seeing bright lights under the clear waters of Lake Mead. I believe what people are seeing is actually alien submarines that are no longer hidden because the water level is too low to hide them. Here's the hallway, and the deck is incredible. It has a lot of exciting features. Do you not see this? They've just been circling around for a little while now. It's really weird. Brock, you're an idiot. We're having a good time. <laughs> right? Jamie, bring two of the life vests and wear them like a diaper. All right, all right, all right. It's okay, I'm coming in. Oh, I love this diaper. Fun, bloody diapers. <laughs> How you feeling? Ah, my apple. Got the light, guys. All right. Ooh. And now it's bright. Oh. So Again. tomorrow is our big interview with Elsa. She has been living in a tent on the lake for about six months now, which she says is for research, but I don't know. Uh, that sounds super Are you weird. Guys hungry at all? I'm pretty famished. I'm hungry. We should see if Brian can throw us a pizza. Brian, Brian. throw us a pizza. Pizza! Pizza! Shut up. I hate Brian, you. Brian, pizza. pizza. <laughs> Is Brian up there? I can't even see his light. Welcome to Bjorn's Kitchen. Tonight, two incredible contestants, both women. Can they make my mystery ingredient into something great? Let's find out right now. Contestant number one, hailing from St. Louis, Missouri, Jamie Mackey. Hello, I'm Jamie Mackey. I'm from St. Louis, and I'm really excited to be Contestant number two on Bjorn's Kitchen, Brittany Big Time. Woo! I'm Brittany Big Time, and I'm here to smoke the competition or fry it. Contestants, your mystery ingredient is the hot dog. Contestants, your five minutes begins. Interesting. Pretty big time immediately goes for her beer. Pretty big time. I see you're using a lot of pans in your cooking. Uh, what do you have? I'm going, going for here? a little bit of an amuse bouche. I just want to give the judges something to remember, something to taste, something to linger on the tongue. I'm going to go fun, but I'm going to go kind of upper class, and we're just going to see what happens, chef. Is that a is that a chicken nugget? It's a chicken nugget, chef. Hmm. And I see you uh, have cut it in a similar way as the hot dog. Absolutely, I'm really going with the diagonal lines. I'm not trying to the pepperoni. Is there, is there salt on the pepperoni? Oh, that's such a good idea. Chefs, we have three minutes remaining. Thank three you. minutes. 
minutes Thank remaining. Thank you, Jack. They're essentially croutons around the side. Interesting. Croutons like at Olive Garden. Chef's a quick reminder, please make a dish that you would eat yourself. Are you losing focus on your your main dish? The only thing I'm focused on is the gold and you. Please don't look at me. This is a battle of styles tonight. Who knows who will come out on top? This is where this is where you like watching Jamie work. She is a perfectionist, and it is very interesting to see her put this finishing touch on her plate. Chef Jamie, you're up first. Well, what I was thinking about for this dish was I wanted to provide clean, simple lines, a nice diagonal kind of fling. One of the things is I cut most of the way through the hot dog, but not I all the way. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Thank you very much, Chef. Brock, would you like to dig into the hot dog first? Things and then, uh, I think this is a uh, hand job. Feed it to him. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> you don't have to keep your eyes closed. Is that good? Okay, I cut. I cut right into the honey crevice and the honey rant. That is a good sign. Hey, Aaron, can I see your honey crevice later? <laughs> uh, mmm. Mmm. The crunch of the nugget really contrasts the soft dampness of the hot dog. Dish number two. These are some sal salted ham medallions with uh, some aged cheese. Peppered with some habanero sauce and a side salad Brittany, of let me Can I just also I say that trouble. there's a drink pairing with Do you want me to feed this one to you? I really do, and I'll keep my eyes open this time. Okay. Because, I mean, <laughs> food is as much taste as it is eyes. 3D. 3D. <laughs> the Bjorn kitchen, the one utensil. <laughs> That is a lot of mustard for not a lot of carrot. Um, <laughs> there's an odd pairing to start out with, but the balance is just not quite there. I I'm gonna watch that now. Jamie, contestant number one, turned out an incredibly precise, very sweet, very interesting take on the hot dog. Thank you, Sean. Contestant number two, Brittany Big Time, turned out something that is best forgotten about. It was heavy with flavor and really just. Okay, um, are all the lights out? Yep, yeah. all the lights are out. Okay, where's the breaker? Shoot, does this mean that you Hey, Brian? Gonna go off? Brian? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where the breaker is? I have no idea. So Brian, do you know where the lights are? All right. I don't know. Wait, it. yeah, let's find the LEDs. Yeah, okay. they're around here somewhere, I thought. Do you I think need they're a under the. Line? I think they're like. Hey, um, hi. Security. Hey, security. Great. Great. Uh, okay, you're coming in. Hi. Hi, how can we help you? We were just patrolling the area. We saw that your guys' power was out. We thought we might just come check in on you. Great, thank you. Thank you, we'll know for next time. What's with all the film equipment? We work on a television show, Alien Engineers. We have the paperwork. Uh, I thought we were cleared to film here. Is that not the case? You're here to see Elsa Moulton. Y yes. Yes. How do you plan on getting there? Because she's at least eight hours out, in this boat at least. Oh! Not to mention a grand worth of gas. <laughs> okay. Um, what time do you need to get there? Well, we're supposed to be there by 2 p.m. We'll pick you up at 1. Our pontoon will get you there in less than an hour. I wanted to stab him. I was so freaked out. I've never killed anyone. I 
<laughs> I haven't. I saw you with that knife and I was like, I feel like you. That would have done it. I kind of feel like yeah, I was I... so scared. Wait, are they still out there? No, yeah, they're gone. Now. You locked the door, right? I locked oh. the door. Uh, cool. All right. And well, we the got a ride. Is Jamie? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. She is the first winner of Bjorn's Kitchen. Cheers. Mm. Hey Tim, it's Brittany, big time, and Bjorn, and we just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I'm sorry we can't be there. Um, we're in. Nevada and Lake Mead and it's really beautiful. We're super tired because it's like it's hot as fuck and we are working on all this stuff for work. But um, I hope you're having a really fun time tonight. We really miss you. Bjorn? Mm-hmm. Bjorn, say something to my brother. Uh, good luck, Tim. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Tim. Happy birthday, Tim. Um... I hope you have a really fun time, and I hope Susan brought you somewhere real nice. Um, we have a shit ton of red vines here. I think you would love it. Um, God, it's so beautiful. It's like super dark here. That's fun. Just started. Please let me pee. No, I just want to be a sexy snake. Okay, but let me pee uh, first. Uh, Ow, you are strong. Uh, uh, why are you are picking me up? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, uh, Ow. Uh, what uh, is uh, this? Uh, Ow. Oh my god. Smile, you're on candid Brittany camera. Well, Smile for candid Britney camera. I my necklace is choking me. Smile for the camera. It's ah uh, 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 you can't uh, heal my nuts. This is nice. It can't be posted. No, it's definitely for. It can't be posted. It can't be posted. Does she do this as a live stream? Uh, Look. Oh no. Uh, I got him. He's been Stop punked. Me. No. <laughs> I gotta go pee. That's ridiculous. Stop. <sighs> Nailed it. You're right. No. What happened here? <laughs> she woke me up by putting me in a chokehold. <laughs> Are we gonna have lunch on the boat, or do we have to bring it ourselves? Hey guys, rides here. Uh, boom pole's on there. Okay, cool. What about these, uh, bright lights under the water? I haven't heard anything about those. Can I ask you a question about Elsa? We've known each other for a while. You dated? No personal questions. You just are using, you're not using the term dating, so you're being around women and having sex with them? I'm sorry, or men. I'm on my way to the remote location of expert alien researcher, Elsa Moulton. 
She's been living here for the past six months, detailing the mysterious lights underneath the waters of Lake Mead. What I want to know, are these lights a natural phenomenon, or are they evidence of alien technology? Do you think she believes what she says? Is this her? This is it. And you can verify that she's been out here six months? Oh, and she's out. Thank you so oh, wow. much for All agreeing right. to meet us. Well, thank you so much for coming out here. Absolutely, our pleasure. Elsa Moulton interview, take four. I'm Bjorn Erickson with alien expert Elsa Moulton. Elsa, thank you so much for being on the show. It is an honor to have you on Alien Engineers. Well, thank you very much for having me, Bjorn. Elsa. We're here on Lake Mead, just miles from Area 51, the epicenter of alien activity. Could you tell us what you've encountered while living here? For the last six months, I've been studying the water here at Lake Mead. And I can tell you what we, I have seen is not human. It's not natural. Mm -hmm. It's definitely extraterrestrial. Elsa, I am floored with this realization. Can you describe what's happening out there? You've watched the water carefully as I have. You'll see a bright light traveling quickly under the water. There's a tremendous surge of electricity that is sucking up everything from around it like a vortex. In addition, the sound in the area is completely quiet. There is no sound because of this alien whatever underneath that surface of that water. Elsa, we are happy to share this information with the world here on Alien Engineers. Yes, because when I was yes. working in Phoenix, Arizona as a reporter, I wanted to present everything I found, everything my engineering researcher had found about all the electrical activity yes. to the world as far as a news report. And they fired me. So I decided I would make it my mission there must be other reports out there from the police, from the military. I'm going to tell the world, send in the information. Everyone needs to know. I am on board with you. Elsa, my producers have told me that you have this information, that it is a CIA document. Is this correct? Yes. In fact, you see that man on the boat? He that man. Is C I A. Okay, that for you. This is it. This is it. Classified. You gotta get a close up of this. With every page I flip, I become more and more convinced that this is in fact the product of extraterrestrial activity. Elsa? Elsa? Did she just? All right. Are we done? That's a wrap. says a lot of things. Yeah, but is that one real? No. You totally look like you do. Lake security. But like that's, that's it? She was nuts, but she was like, she gave us all these. She said they're from the CIA and they look real. Do you think they're real? 
you didn't get them from me, that's all I know. Like, you don't have any idea? Not a clue. So, thank you again so much for all your help today. Uh, Steal anything. Right? So it's someone who had it. Okay, we need to call security. Really? No. I think we need to Why call would someone. you want to call security? Not, not a chance. Why would you not want to call security? Don't you remember earlier when they decided just to come in on the I mean, yes, that was really inappropriate, but I Bad don't know idea. what our options are. I don't think we have cops out here. So there was a break in and we need to report it. I want to do it. For insurance, if nothing else. Think the people at Alien Engineers are gonna like it if we don't have a police report? You guys, it's probably just kids. Actually, guys, this is a good segment, right? While I was away having an incredible, potentially Peabody Award winning interview with Elsa Moulton, we had a close encounter. All of our belongings rearranged throughout the cabin in a highly specific, highly ordered fashion. We have three structures, all three pointing directly to the sky, potentially signaling a higher power. If that isn't confirmation of extraterrestrial life, then I don't know what is. This is legitimately weird stuff. This is kind of spooky. This one, very phallic. This one, homage to uh, college life. And this, this is like definitely the most thought out, the grand finale. Brian, what you doing back there? Setting up the security camera. There? Where would you put it? I mean, I would put it closer to the door. I feel like you're getting most of the room. <laughs> The Catholic Church in Rome has books that talk about extraterrestrials. All the, all the kings and queens and high up officials went to the extraterrestrials for knowledge and understanding. The, the, the frequencies that make the microwave to make the food cook. That's all alien technology. The GPS, the extraterrestrials use the GPS to go to different stars and maps in the galaxy. That was originally from the extraterrestrials. The United States and Europe used to never have redheads and blondes until the Palladians interbreed yeah, with us. Uh, Most of Area 51 has been booming. Well, there are a couple other transfers. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably a higher quality transfer. Hmm? Yeah, then if I you're can, shooting this. I can take like a selfie of the video you have. <laughs> I think we might be evil. Helicopters, if they uh, black helicopters, if they see you fly out there close to, they will arrest you, or, or the or the, uh, or the police will make you go away from it. Wow. 
we perpetuate false information on a massive scale and people believe it. Paul Benowitz. Who's that? Paul Benowitz uh, was an engineer who saw some experimental military training and he asked the Air Force about it and they lied and told him that it was aliens and uh, he believed it and he ended up alone in a mental institution because of aliens. You guys seen Major League? Wait, is that the one with the guy with the super fast pitch? Uh, no, I think that was Rookie of the Year. No, like where it's Charlie Sheen. Super fast pitch, like he's a wild man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen Rookie of the Year? He breaks his arm and he... I like Angels in the Outfit better. Hmm.
He's a lot better. He has to, he has to for a beer. <laughs> I think he looks, he looks a lot better. And I think he just needs to sleep. He just said he wants to sleep. So I think we'll we're check okay. on him every few minutes. Come on up. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. I think we should really try to do that thing where we say something nice about the person to our left. I just think it'll make us feel better and we'll feel really serious. Bjorn, what are we doing? You said the person on your left? Yeah. I thought you said the people we had left. No. No. Oh my god. Even though you're frustrating, you really know how to have a good time. Aww. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Um, Brittany is a lot of fun and, uh, very spunky. Jamie, I feel like, honestly, you would probably all be dead and Bjorn or Brock would definitely be dead if it wasn't for you. You better go check on him. Alright. Bring him a beer. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is this? What the hell is this? Just 
blood everywhere. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get out of here. My name is Andre Stratos, expert researcher on extraterrestrial phenomena. For years, I've studied, collected, and analyzed evidence of alien activity. Some of you might be wondering what happened to Bjorn Eriksson. And I would like to answer that question for all of you. 
Bjorn Eriksson and the crew of Alien Engineers experienced close encounters of the third, first, and second kinds. These events were so strange and so terrifying that no human could possibly explain them. The footage they captured is definitive proof of alien engineers in southern Nevada. Where their journey ends, mine begins. Tune in next Tuesday for the world premiere of The Quest for Aliens, hosted by yours truly, Andre Stratos. trouble a lot of times we'd have a you know a sighting mm -hmm. they'd see us and the blue people would start investigating us and they would start getting too close to finding out that it was a secret pro project so someone would approach them and say that it's a top secret project you've gone far enough make up a story and go home wow. and that's what they did is make up a story and a lot of them didn't stick you know you see right through yeah. it and that didn't help it matters any they, people see well that that guy's lying to me yeah and he was wait so were any of these stories actually like alien stories or was it always like putting blame on like a different part of the government or it, it, you know the alien thing i think you know, that kind of got out of out of out of whack